I have two passions. One of them is technology and pushing the boundaries of what it can do. As an educator, I appreciate learning about ways that I can incorporate technological tools into education, but learning about them isn't enough. I try to create better, more innovative ways to use them. That's my second passion, creating. I taught art for 24 years, and being creative is a part of who I am. It's no coincidence that today's global trends in technology education are heavily based on creating. Creating is, after all, at the highest order of thinking skills. But these trends are also recognizing the importance of putting learning in the hands of students and getting away from the teacher-centered stage on the stage. The following are four tenets of my personal learning manifesto. Learning never stops. Learning is its own reward. Learning must be experiential. And learning must be shared. I didn't always think this way. When I was a student in grade school, high school, and even college, my learning took place between the hours of 8.30 a.m. and 2.55 p.m. To me, the homework I completed at night was an assessment of how much I had learned that day. The only tools I really had for figuring it out on my own at home came from the same textbooks I had used in the classroom, and they didn't engage me at all. Homework itself just wasn't much of a learning experience for me. Today, advances in technology have forever changed the way people learn. Textbooks are just a small part of any learning environment, if they're used at all. More engaging tools, such as videos, virtual labs, and interactive websites, offer students an ability to learn outside the classroom in the way that works best for them. If teachers use these tools correctly, learning becomes more personalized and thereby more effective. There is something to be said for understanding something so well that you can help others to understand it themselves. That used to be the job of the teacher, the master of content. But with technology tools today, it's possible for students to understand content from different perspectives. Having an opportunity to demonstrate that understanding in the form of a video, presentation, or online discussion is empowering and gives students a feeling of confidence like never before. If a teacher is willing to relinquish the role of sage on the stage, letting students figure things out for themselves, or even present to one another, they may all be more engaged or more likely to learn from example. The trend of using games for education is also an example of learning as a reward. As opposed to the classroom environment where many students might give up after failed attempts at a concept, an online game is an environment where they will do just the opposite. Students might fail repeatedly, but learn with each mistake they make until they master the challenge in front of them. The difference between the two environments is that in the classroom, students are afraid to fail. Outside the classroom, there is no fear of doing so. Mastering a concept is much more rewarding when teachers celebrate their failure as a stepping stone to success. Learning is most effective when it can be applied to something. For example, all through high school I struggled with algebra. It just didn't make sense to me, and I couldn't understand what I would ever use it for. Geometry made a bit more sense, but the theorems I was expected to memorize were ridiculous in my mind. At some point in an art class, I had a problem to solve. Suddenly, I understood the value of the calculation of a hypotenuse, and I was able to apply that knowledge to create a three-dimensional sculpture I had been working on. It wasn't really math anymore. It became a skill I needed for art. It made sense that new learning should be applied to students' individuality. If a student can make the connection between one subject area and another and see its relevance, it's more likely that he or she will understand it. Augmented reality and virtual reality are trends that provide students with lifelike simulations that can help understanding. Virtual field trips and live webcasts can also give them access to people, places, and experiences that they've never seen before. I have a problem with quiet classrooms. Of course there are times when quiet is necessary, but I'm not comfortable in a room where one person does all the speaking. Even in the best keynotes I've attended, there's time dedicated for audience members to share and discuss concepts with one another. Shared documents provide a great way for a teacher to stay up to date on progress that is being made between students in any small group. And cloud-based tools are becoming more popular as a tool for students to collaborate outside the classroom. There are other collaborative tools that require face-to-face -face work, and those are more effective for younger students. Most of the collaborative tools I've worked with are iPad apps and are used in the kindergarten and first grade classrooms at my school. 
They are creative tools in which students work together to create puppet shows, video stories, and even storybooks. In any case, everyone in a classroom environment has much to learn from one another. Whether it be socially, emotionally, or educationally, everyone has something to contribute to the group. It's important that teachers provide time for that.